Hey, Alicia Mackay, what's on your mind? What's on my Hi. mind? Oh shit, what a week actually. I got a text today from my friend Callum and he shared a Facebook post with me and it was from a woman who was a home detention officer and worked with people who'd either been let out of prison or had a, a at-home sentence for home detention, talking through the first uh -huh. four weeks of what home detention is like. And I, I literally got this about 15 minutes ago and it's just blown my mind because it could not be a more accurate description of, I think, the process that we've been through. Like lockdown, this is what home detention is like. First two weeks, bit of a novelty, settling in, you know, this is quite nice, new relationship <laughs> dynamics. Oh, how nice I can do a bit that we couldn't do before, right? Then get this. Week three, acute confinement depression. <laughs> That's next week. Week three, despair, loss of perspective, feels like defeat. But then, week four, new opportunity, adaptation. And this is where people look at new things that they might want to study or they think about starting new businesses or they take up new hobbies, right? So there's this really okay. defined curve that happens apparently without <laughs> so, exception. So the question is, can we skip next week? I think I had <laughs> or do next we have week. To go through the pit. I've already had next week. I had it Sunday through Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, I get you. I'm with you. For me, it's been probably the hardest week so far in terms of energy management. Yeah. I reckon and emotion management. So emotion crying, management. That What's one. next week going to be like? I hope we've already done next week this week. <laughs> well, better, I think. So I don't know whether the week one through four curve starts like day one lockdown, because if I think yeah. about how you and I were planning for getting ready for this stuff, we were doing this a week yeah. or two ahead of week That's being right. on lockdown. Yeah. So I don't feel and, like and this so is maybe, week two. And maybe I'm wondering, you know, for you guys watching, you know, where are you at in that four week cycle? I think that's a, it's a really good to have some sort of map. Like yeah. we had the, you know, lock, you know, we had stage one to four as a map. This is another map. So how, how you're tracking with that, right? And if you're in the pit, then okay, cool. You've just got to week three and that's all yeah. right because there's light at the end of the tunnel, right? Oh, I, I think so. And I've done a bit of work with some teams this week on what the transition is from, I guess, what the home detention lady would call weeks one and two, but for a lot of decision makers or people who've um, had to do some really big stuff over the last couple of weeks, it's been this really crisis response yeah. stage. It's like, yeah. yep, I'm in hero mode, I'm doing stuff, yeah. I'm doing it fast, I'm making yeah. decisive choices and I'm empowering my people and we're rocketing forward. And that's great, but it's not very sustainable. And the no. problem is that if you don't have a soft landing ready for that, you just go. Poof. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I've, I've been running a webinar called Calm the Farm, and ah. it's all about how do you um, not just calm down now, but actually have a more sustainable way of working once you get off adrenaline. And, and I suspect that maybe is what's been happening with us. It's like it's been adrenaline fueled. We've talked about this a bit, right? And I've just noticed for me, um, the adrenaline is kind of waned. Is that the word? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like dropped off. Yeah. And I've been asking myself a lot of questions about, so what's a sustainable way of operating, assuming we're going to be kind of in our little bubbles for a while longer. And even if we go to level three, we'll still be having a different way. So what's a sustainable way of operating? And I don't think I have a, a, yeah. a right answer yet. But, but I think the point that you've yeah. touched on there about how we've got to ask those questions is that yeah. it has to be really intentional because what I've noticed happening, just even on a personal level, is if you're not being intentional about what you're going to do, you go to your default. And your default, even your best case default right now is just how things used to be, right? So even if you have a pretty good default, it doesn't fit anymore. And then if you don't have a great default, you hit all of the familiar kind of habits and patterns that like, aren't a great version of your brain. And so for me, that's been like, I want to control everything and I get a little bit naggy and negative and just a bit like, Rah! and then it takes, there's like a lag between <laughs> me feeling like that and then me going, oh, hold on. Yeah, that's not actually, that's not real. Yeah. That's a reflection of stress yeah. and How do you not close being the lag bit, right? Yeah, I like that. It's like how do you how do you yeah. um, 
notice it in the moment as opposed to notice it afterwards and so you can course correct faster yeah because it shows up before you know about it <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah. and then you if you look at other people going oh <laughs> you're on that bender right now okay <laughs> like, well i think yeah. i think some of it and i had this really great session with the leadership team at nzta about this yesterday if we can't expect to close the lag some of that is actually just about being really aware of what your zero version looks like and being able to let other people in so they know. So mm. if the crappy nice. default version of you is um, negative or withdrawn, then if your team know that, when you stop responding to emails or you get a bit snappy in meetings, they've got that extra level of being able to go, oh, this might not be about me. You might be having a tough time. Yeah, it'd be, it's like make your um, make the implicit explicit. Yeah. You know, so, and I've done that with my team. I've, I said to them earlier in the week, we had a pretty rough day on, what's today? Thursday, Tuesday, we had a pretty rough day. Yeah, I think Tuesday was shit across the board. <laughs> it was a pretty tough, but it was also a threshold, I think. This was, we had a really, really good conversation. And yeah, I said, I reckon how I'm contributing to this shittiness right now is because I've been driving hard. Yeah. And and that you may be reacting to that in a way it's like it's overload and you know let's have a conversation about when i drive actually you can call me on that because sometimes i'm not seeing that i'm driving super hard right and that was really helpful i think for them to know that they could push back or at least challenge me or call me on stuff you know well just having um, a bit of permission right so cam and i talk about the difference between why are you doing this to me and just why are you doing this? And they're quite different questions. Yeah, nice. Aren't they? Because <laughs> one sucks oh, the personal out of it. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I like that yeah. one. Yeah, it's a it's yeah. a good trick. And I think um, what I've been talking to people about this week is instead of trying to figure out how to design your environment so that you can be at your best all the time, why don't you actually set things up that are a little bit more reasonable where things still work even if you're not at your best all the time? Yeah, okay. and give it a bit of buffer, right? Um, in our place, we call it have a bit of fat in the system. So, you know, that if, if someone's having an off day, it's like, well, I'm having an off day. In fact, I heard Brené Brown talking in an interview the other day about this, and her and her husband talk about um, how much you got out of 100 right now. You get home from work. How much you got out of 100 to give to the family, right? And if it, it, she goes, oh, well, I've got, I've got 40. And if her husband goes, well, I've got 25, well, then there's another 35 to find somewhere. It's like, oh, okay, cool, right. What are we gonna do? Well, we just have to change the goals, right? We just have to change what's expected here. And oh, just, nice. again, having that really open conversation, like that can be with your team or whatever, right? And I think that's, that openness about where you're at and what can you give yeah, just get it out. Just get it out of your head. Like how many get all the conversations head. you're happening in, that are happening in your head. Just get them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. You got good shit. Yeah, <laughs> you talk good <laughs> shit. <laughs> and we both talk good shit. Talk good shit. Sometimes. Yeah, I've, it's funny actually. I was I was anticipating our conversation today, going, I don't know what I got. <laughs> like it's been, oh. it's been big, right? And. And I was coming to go, oh, I didn't do any kind of like thinking about it, which is probably a good thing. It's uh, and then it's just about talking what's in our mind, which is funnily enough what we're calling this podcast, right? So, haha, little subtle plug. What's on your mind? <laughs> what's on your mind? Yeah. So a good conversation for everyone to have, right? What's on your mind right now? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> nice. Yay. Take care, you. <laughs> <laughs>